listen, I'm, I'm, my feeling after listening to you, to the analyst, uh, to the prime minister, it's, it's reminded me a little bit to the feeling at the end of a plenary session in the parliament. Everything is already said, but not yet by everybody. So I could not agree more with your introduction. The assessment of uh, the analyst uh, is absolutely correct. I found your speech very inspiring. And uh, what Jorgos uh, just said is 100% clear. So I must not get back to things already presented to the audience. I want to focus on the European Union itself. It is absolutely clear that in the multipolar world in which we are living, Europe must give an answer to the role the European Union itself want to play, who is able to play. And therefore we should perhaps describe uh, an element. The European Union is on whatever is on the table split. Whatever is on the table or whatever is on the agenda, on stake, the European Union is divided or is hesitating or is postponing necessary decisions. And this is, in my eyes, for the time being, a disaster because other parts of this multipolar world are more committed, more decided, more acting in their direction, in my eyes, sometimes a very dangerous and a wrong direction, listening to the conclusions of the just finished Congress of the Communist Party in China, I heard very worrying things. Perhaps getting back to one of your uh, introductory remarks, looking to the midterm elections in the United States, facing the risk that uh, the administration is blocked by a hostile majority in both chambers of the Congress, with a pending situation then in the United States um, it's, another, it's another element of worry. Therefore the European Union more than ever should normally have a clear road map and the European institutions entitled to apply the content of the road map backed by the member states and what is the reality? There is no roadmap, and the few elements of a coherent action of the European Union in relation to other parts of the world is often not backed by the member states because the member states as sovereign countries are divided on the strategy. And this is weakening the European Union in a dramatic time, in a dramatic way. And therefore, my uh, assessment, my analysis is the European Union is failing for the time being in answering to the challenges of the time in which we are living. But uh, what should uh, be the answer to the question uh, linked to my uh, description? The question is how to change it. And uh, therefore, I uh, support all these uh, people in Brussels or in the capitals of the member states urging for an entire reform of the European Union. Um, the biggest misconstruction in the Lisbon Treaty was the creation of the Council of Heads of States and Government. When we had the constitution, the draft constitution in, two th in, the, in the early years of 2000, constitutional project failed then by referendum in France and in the Netherlands. The main progress was that in 80, 80 main items of political actions of the European Union in 80 fields, the majority vote was the basis of action. And the creation of the 
Council of Heads and States and Governments with a known president as a known organ of the European Union was nothing else than the reintroduction of the principle of unanimity by the back door, by the backstage. Because in the Council of Heads of States and Government there is never a majority vote. If a French president says no, you can't vote. If a German chancellor says no, you can't vote. And for the smaller member states of the European Union, let's take, let's, uh, take Malta. If the Maltese prime minister says no and he is overruled by a majority vote, you have immediately the discussion that the smallest member states count matter less than the bigger member states. So why uh, not reform the European Union? And I will get back immediately to the question of enlargement to the majority vote as a principle with a certain mechanism which is avoiding that smaller and middle-sized countries could be overruled by the big member states and the other way around, a, vote, a voting system which is avoiding that the smaller and middle-sized countries could overrule those countries who Italy, Germany and France guarantee 70% of the financing of the European Union. This is possible in my eyes, but if we uh, will introduce such a reform in the treaty and enlargement is much easier because a lot of member states of the European Union are arguing if we enlarge the 27 member states union to 31, 32, 33 countries with the principle of unanimity we are deepening this kind of paraly paralytic situation of the European Union and this is not a contribution to answer to the, to tackle the challenges of the 21st century. Therefore, I am urging a reform of the Europe for the reform of the European Union voting system as a precondition for enlargement. And the second is coherent action of the member states. The North Macedonian Greece example Yorgos just raised to solve the problem with the Prespa agreement was linked to the promise, if you solve the problem, all the hurdles for opening uh, of the negotiation of membership for North Macedonia are abolished. And what was the reality? Everything was done. Everything was uh, endorsed. And then you had a council of the heads of states and government where some, not only the French president, also others said, yeah, you know, this is too early and uh, our domestic situation Normally, in a private life, you call it a betrayal. But what is in a private life inadmissible should, in a diplomatic relationship, never be used. Because this is destroying uh, one of the most important things in international relationship, mutual trust. And therefore, I think, more than ever, uh, the European Union must stick to the promises. I was always urging for membership of Turkey into the European Union because I thought 20 years ago already that this could contribute a lot to stability in the whole region and we are promising uh, the Turks in 60 years a membership to the European Union. Whenever they have endorsed reforms, the answer of the European Union was, yeah, fine, but there is still another uh, item leaving, and let's discuss this. This is destroying credibility, but credibility is what the European Union, as a worldwide acting entity, needs more than ever. I want to take... Uh, one element uh, of the speech of uh, Prime Minister Kurti. I agree entirely with two uh, things he said. If Russia would be a democracy, I think they would never have dared to invade Ukraine. I share entirely your view. Because in a democracy, you must justify to the opposition what you are doing. And secondly, you can't ask a membership to the European Union and then go against all the principles of the European Union. And this is the case in Belgrade for the time being with President Vucic, who tries to waver between once, if it is uh, 
uh, useful uh, to be nearer to Moscow and if this is uh, less uh, promising, I try to approach a little bit uh, the Europeans. Playing one against another is also not an instrument of a credible international uh, policy. And therefore I was a little bit afraid as a German uh, looking to the uh, to Chancellor Merkel's last trip around to go to Belgrade and uh, to meet President Vucic bilaterally and then to invite all the other prime ministers of the Western Balkan countries to Tirana and to meet them all together there. This was creating a kind of double standards uh, in the region, which is exactly what the uh, leader of the European Union should avoid to create uh, the image of uh, different importances and uh, therefore, my conclusive remark, the European Union must stick to the own promises uh, to keep credibility because only as a coherent, acting, credible, uh, economic and political heavyweight you can tackle the challenges, exact, especially coming from Russia, from the authoritarian countries or dictatorships like uh, China and also the uh, ambassador may forgive me in case of a change uh, of the administration in the direction of the uh, last uh, president of the United States if the we are urging and uh, if we are running as European Union for the rule of law for a rule-based relationship worldwide my hope is that uh, uh, a president of the United States who has based his uh, own action on lies, betrayal and uh, denunciation of his uh, political opponents, declaring NATO three years ago as obsolete, challenging President Zelensky only to provide him with money and weapons if he is delivering a dossier about Hunter Biden. This is already forgotten. I'm uh, uh, running even, I'm, I'm, I'm urging even more if such a president would be re-elected in the United States of America. The United States are not a reliable partner for the European Union and that the European Union should be, as an enlarged European Union, stronger than ever acting on its own. Thank you very much. Thank you.